so far in our talk we have established we have defined what is identity what is gender identity gender identity is constructed by language and to understand how this construction takes place we use interactional sociolinguistics as a method of analysis in this module you will know that how gender identity is constructed by talk at a workplace we have discussed workplace and gender in previous modules but at that time we talked about workplace only in very specific limited manner we talked about the idea of workplace with reference to business and global economy if you remember we had talked about china with reference to global economy etc we talked about selected workplaces only two workplaces were discussed one was foreign companies and the other was offices and factories okay gender identity depends on discourses of c of peace c for community of and p for practice community of practices and workplace is also a community of practice so it means in this module we are expanding our talk to all types of workplaces now first of all we are calling that workplace is also a c of p why are we talking about c of p first and then we will come to workplace because in the beginning we talked about goffman goffman has given this idea that when you want to apply is procedure for analysis of interaction you apply it on that discourse which we produce at some community of practice that's why we first talk about c of p a social group is c of p you know this very well just to refresh things they is a c of p exists when there is progression from new members to expert expert members new member for c of p membership is necessary you must join that member uh, that c of p for example you want to join some gym you want to sign, uh, join some sports club okay all these are cops you will get membership you will be new members old and expert members already are present in that cop okay they would welcome you but they would socialize you into the ways of talking and behaving in their cop this process is called socialization okay so this is the first requirement for c of p second there is regular interaction between members of a c of p next members have different roles and relationship someone is teacher the other is student someone is senior researcher the others are data collectors someone is officer others are subordinates so there are roles and relationships between the members of cop members are accountable for their assigned roles whatever they do they are answerable for their performance in their role workplace now these are main features of a cop workplace shares all these main features so we would say that it is also a cop now this was the first qualification first requirement 
by Goffman that if you want to apply IS for analysis of interaction, so first you must ensure that the setting should be a C of P. So workplaces are C of P. Our social identities, our profession, we are teachers, we are bankers, we are producers. These are our professional identities. We have color. We are black, white, or yellow. Class. We have religion, Muslim, Christian. So all our identities. All social identities are constructed by discourses. Discourses of our workplaces. Gender identity is also one of our social identities. So definitely, it is also constructed through our talk, through our interaction at workplaces. Understanding workplace interactions, workplace discourse is understanding gender identity. And the gender identity works at individual level, micro level. In interaction, individuals are involved. In interactions, in workplace interactions, institutions are not involved. Individuals are involved. So that's why we say that this is micro level of gender identity. And here at individual level, there are certain norms and expectations, both from men and women. Then understanding gender identity at micro level is understanding gender ideology of society. Why? Because what is the root, what is the source, what is the origin of individual gender norms, the societal gender norms. So if you know the micro level norms, they are linked with macro level norms, societal norms. So knowing them would be knowing the societal norms, gender ideology, gender order, social order, different terms are used for this. You are well aware of that. We have been talking about them in our previous module. It means workplace discourse is blend of micro and macro gender norms. Both interact at workplace di uh, discourse. So this is very important. If you want to understand how the process of identity construction takes place, focus on this workplace talk. Members' commitment to these norms in discourse constructs gender identity. Example of this process. Here is a context. External context. People are builders and they work in some construction company like this. They are working. This is their external context. Roles. One of them, for example, is Max. He is apprentice, new member. And the other person is John. He is foreman. See, they have roles and responsibilities. Non-work related talk during manual work. This is another feature of this talk. They are working, but while working, they also talk with each other. Okay. That is non-work related talk. That can be gossip, that can be about any news, politics, etc. The work is masculinized. Masculinized means masculine traits dominate. Masculine attributes dominate this work of construction. The following talk, this was contextual information about this workplace and the people who are involved. And now we see how their talk becomes 
indexical of their masculinity. Max says clear thought. It means he clears his thought. Gala saaf karta hai. Did you get, did you watch any of the league or the highlights or anything? You know, in spoken language, repetition is allowed. Even errors are allowed. Grammatical errors are allowed. Keep this in mind. He is asking whether you have seen sports, uh, some uh, league match, match of rugby. We know this from their talk. This is how the internal context emerges out of the talk. I have read this talk. That's why I am telling you that they are talking about this thing. John, the apprentice, he replies, I have seen, look here, the error, grammatical error. This is present in their talk. I have seen, sir, a few games, a uh, max, man, you know, man is being used as interjection here. It doesn't mean man for uh, actual man. Man, there are some pretty decent hits. Man, again, the talk, uh, this uh, utterance ends with man. John, yeah. Now, if you look at this brief talk, these people are talking about sports, league. They are using expressions like a, uh, they are using expressions like men. And all these are features of masculine talk. So this is the presence of these features which signal that two males are talking with each other. This is how we reach the identity of the talkers. Now, this is a scene from a rugby match. They are talking about, they say that uh, there are some decent hits by the players. See, this is the scene from a man. So we conclude from this brief dialogue that the discourse of workplace, here the discourse of construction workers tells us are, technically speaking, indexes the gender identity of the talkers.